right, this next section of homework answers are going to show uh, solutions using the normal depth and depth limited procedures. So we're still in chapter four of hydraulics, now problem five. And we've got some tables here to show the solutions. So the first problem is for a V ditch. So for a V ditch, our width of the bottom is going to be equal to zero because it's going to V up. There's no kind of trapezoidal base there. Remembering what that looks like when we think about our variables for that channel. B is that bottom width here. So if we have a V ditch, it's just coming all the way down, all the way up. So that B is essentially equal to zero. All right, so we have to design it so it carries 15 cubic feet per second. So that's our flow rate. We call that Q on our 3.5% slope. So we're going to convert that into a decimal. So 3.5% becomes 0 0.035 as a decimal. The ditch has to have two to one side slopes. So remember our side slopes are our M to one. And so if it's two to one, then that M value becomes two. So M equals two from that. And it's gonna be lined with class one riprap, which means 10 inch diameter stone. So from that stone, we can tell what our Manning's N is gonna be. And again, we've got that equation also on this handout sheet here. For stone, our Manning's N is going to be the diameter to the 1 6 divided by 44.4, where we have our diameter in inches. We said that this is going to be that class 1 riprap, so it's 10 inch diameter stone. So my N is going to equal 10 to the 1 6 divided by the 44.4. So my Manning's N uh, to three decimal places is 0 0.033 for that 10 inch diameter stone. And we'll use the normal depth procedure here to find the design depth and velocity of flow. And we'll start with y equals two. So we know all the way down that our b is gonna be zero, right? Because we have that v channel, but we're gonna start with a y value of two. So because we know b equals zero, we can say that our a is really gonna become zero for this first term. And then m, remember we said m is equal to two, so our term here becomes area equals 2y squared. And our perimeter, again, b is equal to 0. Um, and then our m, again, is equal to 2. So perimeter simplified becomes 2y times the square root of 5. So kind of nice to do first to start that off and to simplify those equations. So if y is 2, uh, area becomes 8 perimeter uh, becomes 8.94, just going to two decimal places here. And the hydraulic radius area divided by perimeter becomes 0 0.89, which gives us a Z average of AR to the two thirds power 7.43. So what we want to do is compare that to this Z required. Um, and remember, we get this from the Manning equation, rewriting that um, for this Z term here. And for this case, it's going to be Q times N divided by 1.486 times the square root of the slope. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for that up here. Z required, again, Q I was given originally, so that's the 15 CFS. And I'm not going to put units here because remember that 1.486 is a conversion factor. So if we put things in in the right units, we'll get out an answer that's in the right units. Uh, 0 0.033. And then we divide it by 1.486 times the square root of that slope in the decimal form, 0.035. So I put all that into the equation and we do get out a Z required of 1.78. So that becomes our value for this third column. And so once we get to our Z average, we compare it to our Z required. In this case, 7.43 is greater than this 1.78. So we're too deep here. Okay, we've started with too deep a depth. So we'll go ahead and decrease that from two feet to one feet and iterate the procedure. So now my area, y becomes one, so my area becomes two. Y is one here, so my perimeter becomes 4.47. And so my hydraulic radius then becomes 0 0.45 and my Z average 1.17. Well, now I've gone too far the other way because 1.17 is now less than uh, the 1.78, and so now I am too shallow. And 
going to need a little bit more than one foot of depth. So let's go ahead and increase that. I usually go to like the halfway point, so I went to 1.5 here. Again, plug in for my area, that becomes 4.5. Uh, for my wetted perimeter, 6.71. Hydraulic radius, 0 0.67. And then uh, for a Z average, I get 3.45. So I'm back to the too deep here. A little bit too big with that 1.5. That 3.45 is greater than 1.78. So I'm a little too deep here. So let's decrease that 1.5. I went next to 1.25 and see how that works out. For the area then, I get 3.125, wetted perimeter, 5.59, uh, hydraulic radius, 0 0.56, and a Z average of 2.12. Still a little bit too deep there. I'm definitely getting into the range, and so, of course, remember we're saying for tests, I'm going to tell you how many iterations to do. Typically, it's just three, um, but sometimes it might be asked for five, so let's go ahead and do one more here. We're still a little too deep, so let's try to bring that depth down just by a little bit. I'm just going to go to 1.2 now, so let's try that. I get 2.88 for an area. I get 5.37 for a wetted perimeter. I get 0 0.54 for hydraulic radius, which gets me to 1.90 for Z average. That's pretty close to that 1.78. Still a little bit bigger, but we're going to call that close enough. Okay, and like I said, on tests or exam, you will be told the number of iterations to do. I just want to see that you're going in the right direction. So let's look at the what they're asking here for is use the normal depth procedure to find the design depth. So we're going to use the design depth of 1.2 feet and then the velocity of flow. And remember, to find that velocity of flow, we're just going to take that Q and divide it by the area. And our Q we started with given that 15 cubic feet per second. And then the area we can just pick off our table here, 2.88 feet squared for that depth. And so that does give us a velocity of 5.2 feet per second at the 1.2 foot depth.